Hey guys, today I wanted to talk to you about a card. And this card is a very good example of why you wouldn't really want to invest in magic cards. At least magic cards not on the reserve list. The reserve list is slightly different, but even very pretty promos like the Ellis Norm in Phyrexia, they will be eventually reprinted. It's not about if they will be reprinted, it is when. And we have a very good case example of it happening soon. So the Godoc Teague and Ellis Norm Grand Cinnabite are the new exemplar promos for Wave 9. This Ellis Norm that you see on the right is a $500 plus dollar Ellis Norm that many people have 10 copies of, 20 copies of, and it was very difficult to get your hands on this card. I don't know how many of them actually exist, but I do know that people have artificially inflated the price and now the Piper has come to collect. So with this card being a judge promo in Wave 9, it means there will be probably 4 to 10 times as much supply as there currently is of this card. Card. We already see people dumping it on eBay, on TCG Player, on Facebook, this is a card that if you currently own, you need to dump today, right now. It is also something that when I look at, it emphasizes why magic would never be investment. Reserve list aside, I'm not going to tackle reserve lists, but my gut feeling and my personal belief is the reserve list will eventually go in some time, but when the reserve list goes, that means magic is not... Um, it's probably on its last legs, like some games. I played this game called Inuyasha TCG, and there was all these like autograph cards that were really hard to get. It was like two entire set, like entire printing set. And then when right before it uh, went belly up, they just gave them out like candy, right? So the reserve list, they will hold on to it for dear life, and that's my gut feeling, but as people play more digital games like Overwatch, uh, there is a Magic YouTuber who is no longer doing Magic who does Overwatch and he has way more subscribers, probably I would say 500 times as many subscribers. And the same can be said about Dariums who moved to Pokemon. It's, it's very hard to grow in the Magic space. It is incredibly hard to grow in the space. But Alice Norm symbolizes everything I dislike about MTG Finance, the hoarding, the, the artificial price inflation, and the concept, the concept that this is some type of retirement fund, that if you just hoard these Ellis Norms, they will go from 500 to 600 to 700, and at the end of the day, that's not correct. That's not a correct mentality, because Wizards of the Coast doesn't really care. They don't care. I mean, if they... Want to reprint Alice Norm in this version? They will reprint Alice Norm in this version. And yeah, I mean, you might say this is payment for the judges. This is a $500 bill, but the time it's paid, it's not $500 anymore. Maybe it's $100. My best guess is this card becomes a $100 card from $500. So that means if you own a copy of this, God forbid, four copies of it you will be losing so much money that it just hurts. So Ellis Norm 545, I got a screenshot of this before its eventual trend down. It was actually 560 at one time. Looks like almost breaking 750 at one time. When So very pricey card, a card that you do see play in Reanimator. It is very good in ED8. But price is artificial. The price is absolutely artificial as a result of people hoarding and the fact that there's not that many copies of this out there. Now, increase the copies by four or ten times as many, you get closer to its real price because there's more copies, there's people who want a copy can actually get a copy now and that's always good. So my philosophy has been, I know a lot of you disagree with it. Uh, it has changed. So if you watch an older video, my philosophy has changed. I used to believe magic was a good investment that it kept growing and 
four years ago before RTR, that was absolutely true. It doesn't matter what you had back then, it would just go up in price. MTG Finance was very easy back then when 90% of the cards that are modern playable go up in price. Now it is very difficult because of reprints. Uh, reprints make it so that even a great card, uh, everything looks perfect in the card, Alice Norm, very limited amount, Judge Promo, very beautiful, different language, popular, and overall very low supply. This card is ideal for people to hoard. Is no longer true. All the things that we knew about Wizards of the Coast four years ago, they've thrown out the window. We have Iconic Masters, 25th Anniversary Masters, Modern Masters 2017, Eternal Masters, Eternal Masters again, Anthologies. From the Vault is still something. I don't get it. Why, why do we need From the Vault flip cards? Who is that to? Like, why? Uh, outside of just reprinting Huntmaster of the Fells, what else is going to be in there? You might say Jace Vince Prodigy. I mean, that would be kind of interesting, but who really needs one of those right now? So, I didn't even know that they were still making From the Vault until, like, I read an article about From the Vault Flip. I was like, okay, they're just running out of ideas now. Um, who really needs From the Vault Flip? I mean, flip cards. Man, it's such a small pool of cards and not any that I can think of that I would really want. And from the vault foiling, right? I mean, the, the, the foiling is awful. But yeah, that is the circumstance um, of what's happening. And it's all about budgeting. It's about budgeting, having a good time, and playing this game out. I'm trying to downsize my collection so I only have four, unless it's a piece of Unless it's Falia or Malera, which I love to death, or Stoneforce Mystic, or insert X Princess there, I'm downsizing. I'm just selling all of them. I'm down to four Tamagors now. And I had to bite the dust selling Tamagors for 80 bucks a piece. Uh, I sold four Tamagors for 80 bucks a piece to a local friend. And I, I'm downsizing. I don't need more than four, so why should I own more than four? And that's good because magic is helping me do something I've never done before, which is figure out what in my collection I don't need and sell it to uh, friends or give it away, actually. Um, some of my friends are new and they just need a collection of cards, so uh, I don't really care that much about it. So yeah, Ellis Norm is the exact example of how someone with 10 Ellis Norms, and there are people I know with 10 of these in Houston, if you had 10 Ellis Norms and each Ellis Norm was $550 and now it goes down to $150, let's be generous, and you lose $400 on all 10 Ellis Norms times 10, you're losing $4,000 overnight. That's the new MTG Finance. You gotta be, work within your own budget. You cannot, you should not have more than eight copies of a card. If you wanna speculate on a card, just buy four, just buy an additional playset and if it goes up, trade it into something you need or trade it into like some fetch lands until the next reprint. I mean, fetch lands are iconic, right? Shock lands are iconic. I'm sure some type of land is iconic. Anyway, that is it. Bye guys.